so Stray Souls came out, and uh, it's bad. Really, really bad. In the hierarchy of bad games this year, meaning on the podium alongside Gollum and Rise of Kong, I think Stray Souls has definitely earned a place. Before I get ahead of myself though, you might be asking what even is Stray Souls, and I wish you didn't ask. Well, Stray Souls is a survival horror game by Jukai Studios. It's their first ever game and they're headed by a former Bloober Team developer. Surely this means that a character in the game won't think that unaliving themselves is the solution to all of their problems. Right? Anyways, I think it caught a little hype from its trailer making the rounds on YouTube and social media. Now that it's here, I can tell you that there's virtually nothing good in this game at all. I'm not even sure how much of a hand the devs had in making anything in this game, to be honest. It's made in the Unreal Engine, and there's a lot of those pre-made marketplace bot assets in the game. Which isn't inherently a bad thing, because some devs do that and make a pretty good game or make the assets and stuff work with what they're doing. But this is asset flip levels of bad, like a lot of stuff is just very clearly thrown in the game so that it was finished. I'll point some stuff out as I see it, but uh, there's no way I caught everything, so if you see something you recognize, just let me know. The thing is, there's AI-generated content in the game, which is inherently bad, and I'm actually not sure if that's allowed on Steam and games. I've, I've heard that somewhere, but I'm not a game dev, so... And I didn't stumble across the Skynet stuff until, like, halfway through the game, so we'll just cross that bridge when we get to it. Also, Stray Souls is published by Versus Evil, who I'm sure gonna rebrand at some point to Versus the Steam Discussion Board because they've been dishing out community hub bans to anybody bringing up any of this stuff over there. I'll touch on the Steam stuff and another issue a little bit towards the end of the video, because I've got to take you through this entire, um, experience. Yeah, it's, it's an experience. I got to take you through this experience first. But before we do that, I want to thank Manscaped for sponsoring this video and sending me the Perfect Package 5.0 Ultra. Manscaped has revolutionized the world of men's grooming yet again, this time with their all-new Lawnmower 5.0 Ultra Electric Trimmer. It comes with their next-gen skin-safe trimmer blade and an interchangeable foil blade for enhanced performance. Their upgraded trimmer has wider, longer, and rounded teeth that's tough on hair but easy on your skin. And when followed up by the foil blade that'll glide right across your skin, you're gonna have an incredibly smooth finish. The Lawnmower 5.0 Ultra also has a bigger LED light with a dual temperature feature to help light and flatter your skin when you get to those harder to reach places. After that, you can finish up with a crop soother and a crop preserver to keep yourself feeling fresh and to keep the gamer funk from a 12 hour challenge run session at bay. Join 9 million other men around the world and head over to manscaped.com to get your hands on the Lawnmower 5.0 Ultra today. And make sure you use the promo code Anxietony to get 20% off your order, free international shipping, and a free gift. Thanks again to Manscaped for sponsoring this video. Stray Souls kicks off with a cutscene of a dude covered in piss, shit, and vomit, who must be pretty embarrassed because he then immediately proceeds to shotgun his wife and kids. And if this entire sequence ends up censored, YouTube didn't like it. Sorry, there's not a lot I can do about it. Eighteen years later, we're a dude named Daniel a day before his 18th birthday, who just inherited a house made of Unreal Store assets from his dead grandma, who he never knew. This isn't the same house we saw in the intro cutscene, by the way, but I'm pretty sure that one was also made from the same marketplace assets. 
So this first chapter is kind of a lot, and for reference, this is probably the best part of the game. Not because you can pet Daniel's dog though, which is something I feel like people put in their games at this point, just to get that one review that'll be like, 11 out of 10 can pet the dog. Also, not that this being the best part of the game means it's at all good, but it's just that this game gets worse the longer it goes on. Anyways, the game has us pick up laundry around the house, which I'm fairly certain is built like a funhouse because everything's proportions feel all off. This is a kitchen for ants, and I'm pretty sure the ceiling expands and contracts, which could be a cool idea if it was intentional. Speaking of expanding and contracting, there's a fat coil of shit in the toilet that's 100% a harbinger of things to come. No idea if this was grandma's last act before dying, or if Daniel's a fucking freak and just let this thing stew in there all day. Honestly, it could be both. Daniel ends up matching on a dating website with a girl named Martha, and in a wacky twist, she's our across the street neighbor, and gives us a lore dump about her grandma, which kind of boils down to her being exactly like the grandma from Hereditary. The TLDR is that Granny was up to cult shit, and Martha wants us to investigate the house because there's locked doors and stuff. Shockingly, we immediately find a cult book that's probably written in blood, and this leads us to the first puzzle of the game, setting a clock to a certain time. Well, that's fixed. And nothing happened. Did I miss something? Then the answer is literally shown to us in a cutscene, which is midnight, by the way. Wow, what a fucking puzzle, dude. Bet this unlocks that desk in the attic. Then I got stuck inspecting lore item and had to reset the game. We can't fucking move. I'm serious. Um, I'm trying everything. Maybe I could like plug a here, I'm gonna try to plug my controller in and try to like use that and see if it changes it. Daniel and Martha work out the solution to the next puzzle for us over Tinder before we even know about it. And it's that the combination for a padlock is the day our grandma died, which really blows Daniel's mind. Oh. There's no way this is real. This is the day she died. And this leads us to a new puzzle, spelling out a sentence with letter blocks. On the bright side, we get to see Grandma, and she kind of looks like one of those people from that shitty Truth or Dare movie. Huh? <laughs> Mommy? <laughs> so we tell Martha about the blocks. She says she'll come over, the house loses power, and Grandma shows up again. Oh, God damn it. What now? Really? On our way to turn the power back on, what I think was supposed to be a jump scare pulls us into a cutscene. What? The hell tripped this? I'm not... Wait, I'm what? Not the fuck power. was that? For someone who won't shut the fuck up later, Daniel has nothing to say when Granny Sasquatches around the house. He clearly sees and gets scared by her, but also, like, doesn't really acknowledge it at all otherwise. It's just kind of weird, man. <laughs> <laughs> oh my fucking god. But here's the grandma jump scare circuit. <gasps> oh look. <laughs> Dude, why is it just the same? Why? What the fuck? Why? Why is it like forcing us to see it? If it happens again, dude, I'm I'm walking away. Okay, somebody is definitely fucking with me. Might as well stay busy, though. Not like I'm gonna get any sleep now. Are we just completely... Oh. What? There's nothing there. Oh. The third time. The third fucking time. Oh, she's, she's coming. Oh, lordy, she's coming now. <laughs> Okay, guys, don't, don't laugh. She has a condition, okay? I'm expect- Oh my fucking god, it, again, it just pulled us! That's, that's four times! Four times! 
I was about to say, watch your head pop out of the toilet. Okay, so there's one puzzle left, and then we're done with this chapter. There's a piano with some colors and numbers around the keys. And honestly, I spent way too much time on this because I thought this was all we had to go off of. It turns out there's a bunch of paintings around the house that only become interactable when this puzzle starts. No other reason to check them out prior or would make you think to come back to them earlier or later or anything. And of course, they just have the answers written on them, so there's no thinking required. Here's how the chapter ends. What is going on? Did that open another door? I think I heard a door open. Dude, if our dog's dead, I'm gonna be pissed. Horror games need to stop killing dogs. Chapter 2 starts off with one of the biggest exposition dumps I have ever witnessed in a video game. It's 10 minutes long, and here's about how jarring the dialogue can be in game. It's just also crazy. Well, I guess the first thing you should know is that uh, this is so hard to say. Let's spit it out then. Okay, okay! Look, I knew you were going to move- Also, I don't think I need to say this, but just as a reminder, that the voice actors aren't at all to blame for any of this. They're just working with what they were given, man. I should mention that there's these little choose what Daniel says bits, and they don't matter at all. Until the very end of the game, where we get a Mass Effect 3 moment. The long short of this is that Martha is actually Daniel's sister, and I'm not even going to touch the whole meeting on a dating app thing because this is the States, and that's probably about par for the course. But yeah. our sister girlfriend goes off about how they're the family from the intro cutscene, and their mom was El Pregante of Daniel at the time of their dad firing off Buckshot around the house. Also, yes, Martha somehow survived that. Although the other kid from the intro, their brother, didn't survive. Unless you count all the times he's going to show up as a jump scare. I don't know, maybe their dad was using the Doom 3 shotgun. Okay, anyways, apparently the cult granny was a part of brainwashed their dad into pulling an E1M1 on his family because Daniel needed to be born from trauma to be a vessel for something evil, which I'm pretty sure is just Silent Hill 3 in broad strokes. So Daniel and Martha are off to a cemetery to see if their dad is buried with the rest of their family because that'll help them get answers or something. Naturally, she sends him off into the woods with what I think is a magical golden desert eagle, but I'm Canadian, so I'm probably wrong about what kind of gun it actually is. Is. And Martha stays behind with the car to prepare a special sister girlfriend surprise for later. The only positive thing I have to say about this entire chapter is that the forest looks nice. Unfortunately, we only get to see what's along the path because this whole bit is essentially a straight line. To be fair, sometimes we get to choose between two straight lines and then backtrack if we pick the wrong straight line. Hilariously, now that we have a gun, there are fucking crates of ammo thrown all over the goddamn place. And this is just something we're gonna have to get used to, because they are everywhere for the rest of the game. There's no inventory, there is only ammo piles. And even though there's multiple ammo types visible on the crates, there's only the golden gun. Also, I'm fairly certain that the crates are from this pack on the asset marketplace. Same thing goes for heals, by the way. Random wall boxes of meds for the entire game. Here's how the first combat encounter in the game gets introduced. It literally just says defend yourself against the monsters, and then some monsters make a beeline at Daniel, trying to kill him. You shoot them, and they explode like meat balloons. It is perhaps the most basic thing you can imagine. Also, you can spam roll forever like a hacker in Dark Souls PvP. Maybe that's why it's called Stray Souls. Ha 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 ha. I'm only kind of kidding about the Souls comparison, by the way. Obviously, this is in a different context, but take a look. I'm alive. If that's what you mean by okay. I just got attacked by a weird figure-faced dog monster. A, a fucking what? Combat is the exact same throughout the entire game. Practically every enemy runs at you in a straight line, begging for the sweet release of death. The exceptions are a couple of enemies that have to puke before they run. Shoot and roll for everything. No need to change up your strategy if you can call any of this strategy. 
the only other thing to say is that you have a max ammo capacity of 36 bullets, besides what's already in the gun. You only get 12 bullets from each ammo crate, so if you're only missing a shot or two, you'll waste ammo by opening a crate. But once again, they're practically everywhere, so this is almost never a problem. I guess the only other thing is to be careful about when you grab ammo, because you can still catch hands while you loot. This enemy here, with all the hands and eyeballs, is the only one I can confirm being from the Asset Marketplace, because it's also in the game Forewarned, which I think is Egyptian Phasmophobia? And it was confirmed to be a bot asset in their Discord. With all of that finally out of the way, this entire chapter is just walking down a forest path and constant fights. It's really, really monotonous. Hey, so can anyone tell me if this is a PT reference? What about that? He always seemed distracted. He seemed so happy at first, but then he was kind of a drag. He'd sit in front of the TV for hours when he came home, watching the same shows over and over. Over and over. He wouldn't shower or even change his clothes for days on end. Then the drinking started. Eventually, there's actually a boss fight. Here's how it plays out. Oh? Oh. Oh? Hel Hello? Does it know we're here? What's up, man? Oh. Wait, did it just go for a fucking uppercut? Dude, wait. Is it stuck? Hold up, did we just get it fucking stuck? Surely it's gonna break out of that. Oh. Dude, dodge roll. Am I getting sunlocked? 37.5. Oh, that was, that was crazy. You really just feed it shots until it's phase two, where all it does is grow to like twice its size, then feed it more shots until it dies. I can't reload. Oh, there we go. You've got to be fucking kidding! This is insane. That's chapter two. Chapter 3 has us arrive in the cemetery where we're looking for dear old dad's grave. And to get to it, we need to get through this vault tech looking ass door. But to get the door open, we need to do a switch puzzle. And to do the switch puzzle, we need to find yeah. a valve to shut off some steam. Also, the switches are broken. And we need to search in trash cans to find them. But the first trash can made it so I couldn't interact with anything, even though I still had button prompts. Are you fucking kidding me? Dude. Okay. I have a really fucking bad feeling about this. Wait. Can I not? Yeah. I'm not gonna risk melting my face off. I can't look in the other one. There's a way to turn this off. What the fuck? Where's our objective? How do we see our objective? Look around for the... I can't! So I had to reset the game. Lots of this game usually boils down to running around and trying to find the correct things to interact with. Because if you don't find the things the game wants you to find in the order it wants you to find them, you can't really collect or interact with parts of other puzzles out of order, even if they're clearly right there and you're aware of them, or if you think something might be relevant in the future. If you've been waiting for the sister-girlfriend surprise, it's just fireworks. It's all good. But hey, look up. I have a surprise for you. Wow, Martha, I... I don't... I, I don't know what to say. I can't remember if it's That's before or after this, really but something. at some point they talk about trying to not make noise so they don't attract monsters. So I'm not sure if this is a great birthday gift. I ended up spending like 20 minutes running around looking for the items I need and somehow completely missed that you can get into this playground in the middle of a cemetery with a barbed wire topped fence. New enemy time though, and it kind of just looks like a microwaved Cenobite. I think it vomits shit. Oh 
and when the game says try to survive, that just means kill everything. doing not great he's not doing great after we get all that shit out of the way daniel and martha's brother who didn't survive we have the bfg division at home drops this jump scare Get used to seeing this, because he'll be doing this a few more times. Then we find out that their dad isn't buried in the graveyard, so the next stop is the police station to try to find out more. End of chapter. Son Michael, mother and son, taken from us too soon. No mention of good old axe murder and dad. It was a shotgun, not an axe. This is chapter four, and I don't think I ever mentioned how many chapters there are in total, so, uh, there's six. We're halfway. It also kicks off with the exact same brother jump scare I just showed you. <laughs> yeah. Anyways, we've got to siphon some gas from some cars, and their brother is still doing the head shaking thing in the corner of this cutscene. That's like three times in 15 minutes of gameplay. We need this gas to turn on a generator to open the door to the police station, in case you were wondering. And when we siphon the last bit of gas we need, we get a new enemy, whoa! <laughs> I mean, it looks new, but it just pukes like the other guy. Earlier in the video, I talked about how Daniel doesn't shut up, so here's what I mean. Whenever you start unloading on a monster, he'll start shouting his cool dude one-liners. That can absolutely overlap each other. This guy dies the exact same way as everything else, just pops right on out of existence. <laughs> just gone into fucking dust, dude. Oh, it's so goddamn funny. Inside the police station is where my last little bit of sanity finally drained away. It's really bad for that problem I brought up earlier about having to inspect the right thing before you're allowed to do anything else. Even if you can straight up see the solution to a puzzle, which just means you're wandering around a lot trying to see where the interact button pops up. But at least watching Daniel struggle to push this chair with wheels is kind of fucking hilarious. Can I... Oh yeah, we can move the... Dude, how heavy is that chair? How heavy? How heavy is that chair? It's on wheels! On the topic of solutions to puzzles, this is what actually broke me and had me questioning literally everything in the game, which drove me to make this video in the first place. There's a safe you have to unlock, and the combination to it is the date in the top right of this newspaper. Sure Except, up. let's take a look at those hands. Hmm. That is, without a doubt, AI generated. Look at those fingers, man. Even AI art Brian Cranston knows it's wrong to exist. So this kind of leads me to believe that the novel worth of backstory the developers couldn't decide to put anywhere except on random notes in the police station might also not be written by humans. I don't have any concrete proof of this, besides the fact that it reads like someone told the chat GPT to write them generic Silent Hill inspired lore to slap on some notes. The flip side is that it could just fucking suck, I guess. There's a handful of these, and even by video game lore standards, they're pretty bad reads. The exception being is that one of them drops the bomb that our golden gun is apparently the derringer that John Wilkes Booth used to kill Abraham Lincoln, albeit modified. I don't know a lot about guns, but I'm not so sure about that. By the way, and I don't know why anyone would ever willingly do this, but you can buy all the in-game lore on the Steam store for six bucks. Okay, so we're almost done with the police station. Martha finds a quick shot upgrade for us, which to my knowledge is the only upgrade in the game, and yeah, just makes us fire a little faster. And then she sees Grandma. What the fuck do you want from me? And 
and then she sees brother. Why? Daniel. It keeps showing sure that. Okay. Then, after opening a filing cabinet with a computer, the they boss. find out their dad went MIA That's after his Cabela's house. Dangerous Hunts practice. So next, they're off to their old family home. And here's what there. happens when we leave Never. the police station. Wait, what the fuck? Where were we and where are we now? Okay. That's a step for being ugly. Shit. This is so fucked. That he's a good man. He was a what good man. Here? Who the he's fuck was he? Safe from Just so you know, on. that line at the end of the fight makes no sense in the context of anything we've seen in this chapter. So I can only assume we were supposed to meet someone that turned into that monster, but he must have been cut from the game and the line was left in. Chapter 5 is easily the worst chapter in the entire game, which is hilarious because it really wants to be Silent Hills, so you think they would have tried a little harder with this one. But it's virtually all combat, with the added twist of fog walls to lock us into, and I'm gonna use this term very loosely here, combat arenas. Okay, really? Defeat the monsters to clear the- Quick, we need to pad the game even more. Looking back at the forest in chapter two, at least we had the option of running past every encounter except the boss. But here we're locked into every single fight. It's about as fun as you can imagine. Oh my God. It's literally just they're padding it with fucking combat. I can't wait to get fucking fogged in again. Oh my God, I was joking. Dad was an alcoholic. You think this was his watering hole? Probably. The clearest memory I have is the smell of his breath when he would get home. Beer and cigarettes. It was gross, but also kind of comforting. On top of that, the town of Aspen Falls looks like shit. The fog can barely conceal it. That's strange, huh? Is that plywood? I think that's like a plywood texture. That just sort of popped off there, huh? We're seeing that, right? Like, you guys are all seeing that. Are my feet... Oh my god, they are sinking into the ground. Holy. Oh my god. Okay, I was like, thought, I was like, do we finally have, like, active proof that I became a manlet? Bro, now he's like, me for real, for real. By the way, the whole point of this chapter is that we ran out of gas on our way to the family home, so we need to find keys to a new car so Daniel and Martha can peel on out of here. When we get the keys and get back to the car, yeah, even more yeah, enemies spawn in. The animal. And then, kind of insultingly, we get an achievement for killing all the enemies in the level. Oh my god. Pest control defeat all enemies? Did I have a fucking choice? All right, chapter six, thank God, is the final chapter. And it turns out that dad was at the family home all along and kind of looks like a big old baby. But here, watch a bit of this yourself. Martha, what is this? What is he talking about? Hi, dad. What the fuck? This fucking corpse is a father? How long have you been here, dad? Depends on what you mean by here. Long time, I suppose. But time is a funny thing here. Seems like I just saw you yesterday, Peanut. The TLDR here is now that we're in the house, we can't leave unless we break Grandma's curse or something. That one scene in the police station where Martha saw Granny, I guess was supposed to imply that she's susceptible to getting possessed? Here's how this whole interaction ends. Oh, Norman. You were always a failure. Even your little tricks to keep me away have failed. Oh my fucking Never god. You take them. Martha. Get out of the chair. No power here. The time has come for you to accept your fate. The dad's just this chilling like in his eyes. I'm losing it. No! Ah. <laughs> uh. 
<laughs> Dad? I, I feel sick. Okay, so Martha's possessed and we have to do some dumb ritual to get rid of Granny. This boils down to running around the house and picking up candles, and sometimes getting pulled into loading screens that drop us off in a forested area while Grandma yells at us. Her voice sounds like farts. That is like the worst voice they could have used for a grandma. I was stuck in here for a while until I just happened to run into this wall and Daniel climbed it. The game never outright tells you to do this, nor do you have to do anything like this in any other part of the game. I fucking hate stray souls, man. Initially, the candle summoned Daniel's mom, who sets up lore for a sequel. Your grandmother isn't what she appears to be. She is only a small part of what is to come. You and then Grandma comes you. out. Oh. Oh, what the fuck? What the fuck just happened? She wanders around the house, and when you do enough damage to her, she just sinks into the ground. Oh my god. Oh my god. <laughs> what the fuck is even happening, man? If she catches you, she gives you the old left right. Eventually, this all accumulates in a final boss fight with Grandma in some sort of tomb in the house's basement. What the fuck? After all of that, it dies of a tummy ache. Martha? Why does this- Mar is he actually British? One loading screen later, and we're at the end of the game. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Who could have possibly guessed that the dad would be tying a noose? I guess you can take the dev understand. out of Bloober Team, but not the Bloober Team out of the dev. Stray Souls has three endings, depending on what dialogue option you pick at the very end. There's good, there's bad, and there's who knows. Because get this, you have to fight Grandma again to see a new ending. Except the ammo boxes before and in her arena stay used up if you go back to get another ending, because I guess the game sees beating her as a checkpoint? So you really only have enough ammo for like two endings. Here's the bad ending. Or maybe it's good because we didn't let Dad hang out. You know what? Fuck you. You could have fought harder. You could have made things different. But instead, you let that crazy old hag and her stupid cult turn you into a fucking puppet. I tried, son. You don't know their power. I know that if it were me, I'd never let anything stand in the way of protecting my family. You killed my mother for fuck's sake. You stole everything from me! Everything that could have been! Son, I was weak. The booze. I couldn't think straight. That's all you have. Fucking excuses. Son, 
Don't let the darkness change you into someone you're not. It's too late for that, asshole. Oh my fucking god. And that, more or less, is Stray Souls. It is fundamentally broken at worst and hilarious at best, but as funny as it can be, I don't think it's even worth buying ironically. It's just an unfun, mostly boring mess to play. And like I said earlier, people have been catching bans on the community hub for bringing up any of this stuff, so there's gotta be some awareness, right? Especially since the publishers were asking people to bring their complaints to their Discord instead of Steam. But not to avoid negative reviews, that's just to help people faster. They swear, bro. Then there's the whole thing with the lead developer's Twitter, who was liking some, uh, pretty not okay stuff, which I'm not even gonna touch beyond saying, maybe don't be awful? Between the heavy use and poor implementation of marketplace assets, clear use of AI with at least the one photo and who knows what else because I'm not getting back on Daniel's wild ride to find out, community hub spankings, and the Twitter stuff, I'm shocked this game made it to Steam, or even that it's still on there. At the time of this video, Stray Souls is sitting at a 27% positive on Steam. As you probably could have guessed, a good portion of those positive reviews are people making fun of the game, or their incoherent nonsense. Kind of like Stray Souls. If you like this video, I also stream over at twitch.tv slash anxiety, where I play through most of the stuff live, for better or for worse. Thanks for watching. Just stop! I can't let you do this. You didn't deserve what happened to you. I know it was that old witch the whole time. She's ruined all our lives because of that stupid cult. I don't deserve forgiveness. Maybe you're right. But I know the truth, and so does Martha. Killing yourself isn't going to fix anything. You're a better man than I ever was. Proud of you, son. Rest easy, old man. Old man, dude, he looked like a fucking baby. Goo goo gaga. -ga.